Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to episode 184 of Two Legs, a Paul McCartney podcast. I'm one of your two co-hosts, Tom Hunyadi. You may know me from my other show, Talk More Talk, a solo Beatles video cast. And as always, I am joined by my partner in crime. You know him from his other show, The Other Leg, right? Andy Nichols, the uh, Andy Nichols Vault. And uh, he'll tell you more about that as well. And Andy, what's going on, my friend? Good evening, partner. On uh, on remote location at a secret location, <laughs> an undercover bunker tonight. Not my usual. There you go. No. <laughs> I, was just say. I know people will probably say, "Where is he? he's not in his usual spot?" No, I'm not. Right. I'm I'm on assignment tonight, so uh, we wanted to record. Yeah. We found a window, so we're here and we're back. And uh, good to be back. Uh, and we're tackling a topic that you've already done once, but I haven't. So why don't you tell us? Right. All? Yeah, so we're just going to discuss the the live albums. These are just from the tours. Uh, I don't, you know, we're not going to cover Unplugged because we we've covered that already. Um, Amoeba, I mean, we've talked about that as well. So we're just going to talk about the the CDs albums that that came from from tours, and you know them as um, as Wings Over America, Tripping Life, Fantastic, Paul is Live, Back in the U.S. slash World. And good evening, New York City. Now, as Andy, um, Andy said that, yeah, we, um, me and my cousin, or my cousin and I, uh, for you grammar freaks out there, we, um, we, we did tackle this really, really early on in the early, early days of, of two legs. But uh, you know, thoughts have changed, and plus, you know, Andy uh, hasn't. We haven't really talked about this with Andy yet, so uh, we thought, why not, and uh, just revisit. This uh, this topic, which is a fun one, um, because there there's some some good live albums. There's some not so good live albums, in my yeah. opinion, anyways. I'm so so, totally. but we're gonna talk about that. And uh, Andy, you know, you've seen Paul how many times? Uh, about a dozen now. About about a dozen. Yeah, and you did see that. You did see that. Good evening, New York, uh, in that City Field, right? You were at the, that show. Right? I was at. Uh, Paul did three nights at City Field, and I was at two right. of them. Yeah, right. And I was on the tour for the Paul is Live uh, uh, yeah. album slash CD. Which so I'm sure that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna fall probably somewhere in the lower tier of our <laughs> of our live albums. If it's just that's just a hunch. That's just a well, I well, we'll we'll talk about that because we'll talk about you know, there was it, but it's, it's well, there were some songs that were omitted. There were some songs that were omitted from that tour. You know that they did on that tour that's not on the uh, that the doesn't that's not on the album. Which right, which is a damn shame because yeah. he did do some a couple of good songs that didn't make the cut, unfortunately. So yeah, and I also but, as we discuss, we're discussing the main live albums as Tom mentioned. I right. would like to toss uh, in there too, towards the end, a couple of honorable mentions. Uh, oh yeah, you know that that there have been out there, you know, as a bootleg or as officially released, even as late as 2018. So we're not including right. them in the main canon of live albums, but you know, we can we, at the end we can kind of talk about them. But um, yeah, live albums for me, um, you know, I I enjoy revisiting live albums um, more so mm. than others because. Mainly the set list, right? The set list is the reason that we draw that we go back to them, um, and that you know how are they recorded? How are they? How are they? Are they how are they mixed? I mean, I will say one one drawback of all of Paul's live albums, which I don't like, is it's just the music. It's not mm. the in between banter, the talking, the stories, right. the the ad libbing, well, the introducing of like of of say on wings is like introducing the. You know the the horns guys, Thaddeus Richards, and all right. those guys, and to Howie Casey. Like in the live show, you hear all that, and it would be really nice if if those all the full performances came out, not just the songs. But Paul seems to just release, you know, just the performances. Everything else edited out of these live albums. That's what it seems to be that it's like mm. for the most part. Well, for the most part, I mean, I was revisiting tripping the live, and you know, there's a little banter. A there. little on that, a yeah. little, right. yeah, you know, a little. So, but I, I get it, you know. But then again, you don't. I mean, you want people to go to the show, you know. what I mean, if you want to, you know, you want them to, uh, 
you know, if you're going to put out the live CD, you know, save some of it that's special for people that actually go to the show. You know what I that mean? That went to it to make it ex- unique yeah. for them. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, uh, you know, he doesn't need to tell the story, the Jimi Hendrix story. Uh, <laughs> you know, you don't have to put that on the CD. You know, not no. everybody. Nobody will. Nobody will go see him live. <laughs> Again. <laughs> You no, know, they wouldn't. But, they wouldn't. Yeah. It's, honestly, oh, well, I heard the Jimi Hendrix story, so I don't need to go now. You know. Before we continue, I must say, and I, I meant to, t- I meant to share this with you earlier. I got a, I got a message from a friend of mine, fellow and a fellow Two Legs fan and uh, follower, that there is a McCartney gig booked right. for Paris in April. Hmm. Not sure if you heard okay, about it, but that. not announced yet. It's on a website called All Events. Dot in Paul McCartney got back Saturday, March 11th, 2023 hmm. in, in Paris. Interesting. I wonder if he's going to redo, you know, or set up that uh, European tour that was uh, canceled during the pandemic. I think 2020, he was supposed to do that European tour that led up to the Glastonbury show. Right. Um, all of that was, was I don't think it was ever postponed. I think it just got canceled altogether. Just got canceled uh, altogether. Yeah, people that got tickets for that, please uh, remind us uh, of what happened. Let us know your experience. Um, was it just all? Was did it was, was it postponed first, or or did it just get canceled altogether? Um, because I, you know, all the Europeans, you know, they want to see Paul too. I mean, it's only fair that they get a shot as well. Yeah, he did his he did his return to the U.S. of a very small, you know, fifteen yeah. or sixteen show engagement, and now. We'll see. I mean, he, as we talked about when we went live last week, he's been very quiet. Somebody mentioned to him maybe the maybe the passing of his brother-in-law, the main guy who was mm. John Eastman. Right. Maybe John that. Eastman. Maybe that. Yeah, the passing of John Eastman. Maybe that. Maybe that plays a part in Paul's business affairs. Maybe he's just, you know, maybe letting things mm. lie and seeing what taking stock of what he wants to do. You know, Lee, John Eastman was his right hand man. For right for over since since the end of the Beatles, so oh that was absolutely sixty nine, yeah, right. And as 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 we now know, in a in a in a something that might be we may or may not be reading, yeah, we, we learn a lot about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and it's very good. Very. Good. Oh, <laughs> it is. It is fantastic. Yes, but um, so yeah, so we haven't pre ordered it. Pre order it. <laughs> yeah. So we, yeah. But we don't know. We don't know if the passing of John Eastman, and I think it may, affecting touring, Paul's business, his releases, it may. We don't know. But um, mm-hmm. we, we shall see. But uh, back to the live stuff. Um, you know. Well, hold on. Uh, before, before we get Go there, um, uh, you know, if you're watching this, if you haven't subscribed yet, please, please, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, you know, uh, like this episode if if you like it. Give us a thumbs up. Hit that bell so you get notified when uh, when uh, we're live, when we go live, or when new episodes uh, are posted. So uh, please help us out there, and uh, well, let's you know we want to try to get to let's try to get to 1500 before. Uh, before end of the, the year. end of the year, yeah, let's let's. Uh, that would be nice. Goals. Yeah, let's get the fifteen hundred by the end of the year. That would be great. So, uh, if no. you're thinking about checking us out on on you know on YouTube, uh, please check us out and subscribe. But go ahead, Andy. You know, no, I was gonna say like there's a lot of there's a lot of Beatles video casts and podcasts out there that cover right. everybody. Yeah, you know, the Beatles all right. solo. We're a little different, so we know that our our sub count is not going to be indicative of those other things because. We're just talking about Paul for the most part. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, we're going to do an unboxing of Revolver when we get it, you know, because it's it's worthy. If something John related, we, we tackle it. But we're mainly, you know, all of our original shows are all Paul focused. So we know that mm-hmm. we're very niche, you know, fan base. So we do appreciate the support. And, uh, you know, we know that the show has grown over the last year or two and we, we want it to continue yep. to grow. So um, we want to keep you know going live and doing these things and, you know, coming up with new shows to talk about, new topics, and there never seems to be um, any short, you know, shortness of oh, no what shortage. Can talk, what can we talk yeah. about for Paul? I mean, we really, we, we you know, interviews and uh, releases, anniversaries, you name it, producers, we could go on and on, and that's our plan. 
Yeah, you know, I mean, this has been six years, and, you know, there's no shortage. You know, obviously, we're kind of redoing a, a, a past episode, but, you know, you're included in this uh, since you weren't the first time around. And, uh, you know, I want to hear your opinions and, and your thoughts on, on these live albums. So sure. um, why, don't we, uh, why don't we go and uh, start with, uh, you know, the gold standard. Um, yes, that is yes, Wings indeed. Over America, 1976. Yes, yes, indeedy. This is the Columbia pressing, which I happen to just grab on my shelf this morning. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 weird how they just how they did it this way with not the full cover and the artwork here. But um, right. right there, Tom's got the 2013 remaster. And uh, now, right. if you read your Mattinger and Easter, very interesting. You actually get more. You may hear more edits, longer edits of the tracks of the, on mm. on the Colum on the Columbia. Than you would on a capital, like really? I'm t- talking very yes, like like the opening numbers of a song, you know, a little stage banter here and there. The, it, it is a little bit longer if you have a Columbia version or on vinyl, which I did score a few months back. Finally, um, you can hear a little bit more, just a little bit more at the end of each track. Some tracks on this Columbia version of Wings Over America, but of course, um, the ultimate, the ultimate gold standard, um, probably the one that I replay the most. I mean, who? Yeah, how, it gotta be right. Well, I let's mean, be you, honest. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, that's the one I visit the most. I mean, I I've got a lot of it on my iPod. You know, so uh, whenever it's on shuffle with Paul McCartney, you know, I hear a bunch of tracks from it, and mm-hmm. you know, it's the only only live uh, CD uh, of, of songs that I have on my iPod at the moment. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's um, obviously height of his uh, powers, right. Or height of his uh, success back in 76. It's a triple, triple album. It goes to number one um, and just successful comes out in December of 76. And um, you know, the cover by hypnosis, the inner, yep, yep. inner sleeve, uh, by our buddy uh, Jeff yeah, Cummins. Right we just there, had him on. You know, we just had him on. Yeah, yeah. I was a little. So if you want to hear the story of this, uh, the inner jacket, you know, head over to our Jeff Cummins episode and uh, listen to that. So, yeah. but you open it up. I mean, you, you had to. Did it come with a booklet? That Columbia one? No, I was gypped. It did not come with that. It, it did not. No come booklet, with the, uh, huh? No oh, booklet wow. with the Columbia. No booklet. Hmm. I was a little gypped with this one, but. Uh, I did right. score a Columbia vinyl, which Tom did about a year ago, I think maybe. Yep. And then I got, yeah. I found one finally about six months ago. Um, triple vinyl on Columbia. Um, well, I mean, what can you say about Wings Over America? Yeah. The only thing bad about it was the timing, was the release of it. It, it was a little bit late for the Christmas rush. Right. When If you're going to release an item for Christmas and get that rush, you want to release it like in early November to really maximize oh, November, the sales. Yeah. Right. So it did suffer. It, it went to number one. But it probably would have done a lot better had it come out a little bit sooner. Well, maybe. I mean, it did sell. I I think it did sell through over three million copies, if uh, if I'm not mistaken. But I mean, it did very very well. And um, I don't know. I mean, if it was released earlier, maybe. Uh, but I mean, it went to number one. I mean, it's it's very success. It, it was successful right. either way. You know, it's also one of those. I, triple, I don't think. It's, no, it's, it's also one of those triple triple albums that is. Banded weird side one, side six, side two, side three, side four, side five. It's not you can't take the first record out and go side one, side two. It's yeah. it's side one and side six for those flip floppy right. turntables that would flip the records over, <laughs> which, which makes right, for annoying right. playing. But right now, now it was it's going to be just a double album, from my understanding, but then with the success of the red, white, and blue bootleg. Uh, edition then then that's when um you know paul had to change a heart and said okay let's let's do uh let's do a triple which i i think you know was for the better don't you totally agree and i believe that the the red white and blue bootleg was his the live show from los angeles yeah. which mm, which came right. which yeah, the, the the la show which if you've seen some of rock show there's a little bit of los angeles there's a little bit of seattle in there there's right. you know there's a couple of different venues in there but the uh the LA the LA Forum show is the bootleg that Tom's talking about, and that it uh, you know he was capitalizing on 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 bootleggers and uh, right. to get it out there. And uh, he didn't he didn't release a truncated version of his show. It was the full show, and it required right. three three you know a triple you know a triple triple right. LP set. 
one of the uh, the reasons why, it, according to Joe English, one of the reasons why it did take a little extra time was because they overdubbed backing vocals on the uh, for the for the album, which is not knowing now. We're finding out a lot of live albums from from the seventies and oh and, that were the that, 80s were, that were a little a little were, post sweet yeah. Exactly. Yeah, a little post sweetening of of course, you know, especially that that first Kiss Alive uh record. But yeah, a little work had to be done uh you know in in post production, but uh you know again, I I'm, I'm glad this came out. We got um we got maybe I'm amazed as a single which went top 10 uh going to going to number 10 and um you know, again, it's just uh it is the gold standard. I this is exactly what you want from from Paul, you want the you know he goes back a little bit because it contains five Beatles songs, right? But this is just which would, I mean, which would flip, hits. which would which would flip in right. about fifteen oh, years, big time, right? <laughs> right. But I mean, you you've got you've got deep cuts and and you've got hits, you know. I mean, and what Magneto what and Titanium Man mixed in with uh you know you know Beware My Love and and right. My Love, and, you know. So and the crowning the crowning jewel in this whole thing is that really. You know, wings over wings at the speed of sound was all obviously out at the time, and you got a couple of big hits from that album on this tour. But the bulk of this album is surrounded in Venus and Mars. You've got eight mm. tracks from Venus and Mars represented right. on this set list. So this is a very Venus and Mars focused set list. Venus and Mars rock show. Uh, you know, you gave me the answer. Magneto and Titanium Man, Spirits of Ancient Egypt, Medicine Jar, right. Let right. Letting Go. Call me back again. Yeah. That's Listen seven to what songs. the man said. Listen to what the yeah. man said. That's eight songs from one album. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, and then, of course, Speed of Sound, which was made while the tour was going on. So you get Beware My Love and Letting uh, Silly Let Love in. Songs. Silly love let songs. In. Yeah. yeah. Time to Hide. And, and, and Time to Hide. So, yeah. but really, I mean, you think about, you know, Band on the Run, Venus and Mars, Speed of Sound. That's lo- that's ninety percent of what that's the, the set bulk is of the album. Yeah, that's the, the bulk, bulk of, the album. of it right there. It's the bulk of the album. Your five Beatles songs, a couple of covers, and that's it. And that's it. So, right. um, and then uh, the the non album, the non album, Soily to close it out. Soily, of course. What you know, we, we all gush over the opening, right? The Venus Mars rock show going in the jet, which is uh, you know arguably one of the greatest openings to a live album ever. Hands down, on an album or Hands even down. in a even in a live setting, in a live setting, you know? right? And uh, when you watch the concert film, could you just imagine being in the audience for for the opening with the bubbles going and hearing and the opening strings right. of Venus and Mars and Rock Show? And he teased us, he teased us with that in 2010. You know when he when he did one verse, he did one or two verses of uh, Rock Show, and then he just stopped mm. it. You know, right before you know he got into that green metal suit and prepared to shoot up the city. Right. <laughs> which is the best part of the song anyways right. um you know i you know in the laser show that was involved you know you got all the the smoke you know uh, it's i got man i would have what i would done to have been at that show but you know three years old i wouldn't have remembered anything anyways no you know, so no but uh yeah you know and but that, highlights for you highlights for me well before that it's just the structure of the show is very much still what paul does now right big mm-hmm. opening more songs than the acoustic set in the middle of the show, the right. cool down period, right? You've got the same thing here with I've just seen a face, Blackbird yesterday, Bluebird, and all that. That's the melt. And then come back here for the second half of the show. Um, the, the highlights for me, I mean, I, I as great as the first CD is, I think disc two is the, is the home run disc. I, I you just can't right. beat it. I mean, now listen, I love the granny music, so I love you gave me the answer. Uh, listen to what the man said is a totally different kind of version live on this than it is mm-hmm. on the studio. Right. It's much more of a, it's more of a live rockier number. Um, silly love songs. Absolutely. And I've said this before on the show, absolutely the best version of the song live here. Absolutely cooks on fire. Paul and the Rick and back are just wailing on it and just killing it. So this is Paul and his bass playing Rick and backer best. It mm. really is. Mm-hmm. It, it absolutely is. Even on Letting Go and Band on the Run and High, High, High. So for me, the second half of the show is where, I mean, the opening is fantastic with Venus and Mars and Rock Show and Jet. I love that. I think that's that's tremendous. You know, but I'm not really as much as a fan as the, of, of Ancient Egypt and Medicine Jar. I kind of skipped those a little bit. But, um, right. and I like the acoustic stuff. But the second half of this set 
is where that's mm. where that's what I replay the most is that second disc gotcha. always. Right. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's a very well structured, uh, you know, album. I love the fact that and the placement of the songs too. I think w w was excellent, uh, well done by Paul. But for me, you know, the opening as, as for everyone, I, you know, we all gush over the opening three three tracks. Um, you know, again, uh, Magneto and Titania Man, I, you know, he, he does great. There's a great solo by Jimmy in there. You got My Love. I love the live version to listen to what the man said. I mean, if for me, you know, I, I always prefer the, the the studio over live. However, the, the listen to what the man said for me ri almost rivals the, uh, the studio, studio version. Yeah, studio. You know, again, Silly Love Songs is fantastic. The no, I, I like love. It. You know why it's good, Tom? Is because the, the ending of it. It's so mm -hmm. different than the on the studio version. It's yeah. just a fade out, right? But in live, right. you know, you know, he's that whole. You go now, break it up, boom, 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 right. boom, 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 yeah. boom, and then everybody kind of just big, big, big finish. You know, and that's, mm -hmm. that's what's great about yeah. it. It's, it's rocking. It's it's rolling along. It's rolling along. It's rolling along. I break it up, boom, boom, boom. That's what <laughs> that's what that's what that's what that's what we love about it. That's what we love about right. it. Right. And then, you know, ending it, you know, with high, 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 and then Soily. For me, I mean, just two great, you know, kick-ass rockers uh, from Paul. I mean, the only thing that this is missing, I, you know, he did Junior's Farm earlier in the tour, yeah. the first half. If if this had Junior's Farm, I mean, you could take, you know, Richard Corey, you know, whatever the hell his name is, or, or <laughs> you know, even Blue, Blue Bird, you know, Medicine Jar, you know, Junior's Farm, please. You know, this, this Farm, needed to yeah. be there. But it that's really, the only complaint I have. Only complaint yes, I have. Only complaint. Only complaint. But yeah, you Junior's know, phone now, not being in there was a big was a big mess. Right. Right. Now, uh, um, the 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 controversy surrounding this is what did he do for those Beatles songs? Oh, the songwriting credits read McCartney Credit, Lennon for exactly. the first time. It, right. You know. Um, yeah. Some people weren't happy about that. <laughs> Now, and I'll try to hold it up and see if we can see it here on the disc, if I can hold it up and right. see it. McCartney Lennon, there it is on the Long and Winding Road. Let me know if you can see it. Probably not. No, no. no. Uh, but no, it says but it. People have it. They can see. Right, but there it is, McCartney Lennon. Rare. Yeah. And now, yes. does, the 2000, does the 2013 still say McCartney Lennon or Lennon and McCartney? I I think it did. The the um, I'd have to go back. I did, think I did check. Um, probably, probably stayed the same. Yeah. Um, anyways, I'm not gonna. Not a big deal at the moment. But um, but this is by far. I mean, he 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 shot. He you know he hit a home run with the first live attempt. Yes. And um, it's 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 near perfect. Ninety nine percent perfect. <laughs> but totally to end agree. the show with end the show with a song that no American you know is gonna know. Uh, you know, unless right. you saw, you know, his his European tours, you know, UK European tours, you know, the previous, 70, you know, 72, 73. 73 yeah, 73. You would, you would, yeah. You would know you, it. You yeah. would not know it. You would not know it. Yeah. Yeah. So. So. Uh, we, had okay. to wait. We, had, we, had, we had to wait 13 years to get the next one. Right. That's 13 right. years to get the next live 13. album. Well, let's, let's talk about, I mean, because, you know, when we did talk to Juber about, you know, why wasn't, uh you know, it up for considered the 79 tour, you know, being considered for a live album either. He said, because that was more, what a, a more of a warm up. They're still supposed to tour Japan and then into America. And then we probably yeah, would have got still, a long it's album. It's still out of that. so good though. It's still so good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, the, and you've got it right there. The live album from 79. That never was last right. flight. Yeah. Damn. This should have mm -hmm. came out. And right. I mean, listen, Juber knows it. Everybody knows it. I mean, yeah, but it was considered a warm-up show. But um, and maybe three years after Wings Over America, he felt he didn't need to issue another live album. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, Japan but see, the, but the but the set list was was different enough to where if he did do it, I don't think anybody would 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 bat an eye over. It, you know, definitely not. Every night and yeah, the back to the, the back no to the words. Egg, the, yeah, the back to the egg yeah. material on here. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, all line, right, moving yeah. on. Yep, yeah. to the next one. Tripping the Live right. Fantastic. Right. Now, this is uh, November of 1990. Now, this is going to set a pattern for the rest of the live albums coming out in November. Uh, because everyone after this also come, came out in November 
um, you know, obviously not of 1990, but all the Novembers that they were released. But uh, Tripping Live, fantastic. I'm sure you've got the, uh, was it the Capitol uh, right here? Yeah, yeah. The and, original. Yeah. And, um, yeah, this is the original double. Um, I'm surprised it never was re-released into, like, you know, one of these little single, you know, digis or, yeah, or this the way is one, back in the world. Yeah, this you know. one has not been retouched. It has not been re-released yeah. yet. Um, uh, which is, which is, which is weird, but, um, you know, two, this was a three LP set as well. Um, yes. only going to 26, uh, here in the States. And when I say the, the charts, I'm only, I'm only doing the States, uh, at the, at the time. However, it charted at 26, but then a little while after we got the, the tripping, the live, uh, fantastic highlights, highlights, which ended up selling more, which ended up selling more. Uh, that one platinum. This this failed to go uh, gold. Yeah. So kind of crazy. Yeah, I edited you know, a, 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 you know, I had that too as a kid. But I must say, yeah. you know, I was of the age, and Tom probably was too. Then I, I listen. Wings Over America will always be the best. But my fondest memories are with this are with this live album because of where I was in my fandom at the time. I mean, I mm. played the hell out of this live album as a, mm. as a young fan. I mean. I know it backwards and forwards as well as Wings Over America, if not better. Um, and here's why it retains its awesomeness. Okay, we know now Paul's set lists for the last 20 plus years are so Beatle heavy. However, this was the first time that he actually welcomed his Beatle past back into the set list. So the war, the war tired songs, the old war horses that we have been beat to dead for the last 30 years plus. This is the first time that they were played live. So right. It's so they were magical. fresh then. They were fresh. Right. So you're hearing Paul McCartney play Hey Jude live for the first right. time. That's a pretty special freaking moment. So, yeah, yes. it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a staple now. But, like, you know, the medley, the Golden Slumbers medley, Let It Be, Hearing Let It Be, and, and uh, you know, things like, you know, uh, The Fool on the Hill. These are songs that were never, ever played live. I mean, they were in 79. But uh, to hear them now, Sergeant to hear Sergeant Pepper's live for the first time, that's mm -hmm. well, that was a pipe dream. And to get a live album that had deeper Beatle cuts and the hits and a couple of the Wings right. hits and and new material from Flowers in the Dirt, which was a great album. Come on, right? And heavy too. I mean, this was one of the most. Uh, I mean, Flowers in the Dirt was one of the most uh, one of the albums that you know had a lot of songs played. Right? I mean, it featured a lot of tracks. Uh, during the live shows, um, yeah. just like back to um, back to the egg. I mean, featured a lot of uh, you know live stuff as well. But this was incredible. What six and, seven songs from yeah from flowers the, on what, this? The last time he opened up one of his shows with a new song from his album. Good point. And 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 then this one I will also say uh, is better than the album cut for me. This live version of Figure oh. Eight I think kicks kicks the the studio version's ass totally. Totally. So you got Figure of Eight, Rough Ride, We Got Married, uh, This One, and My Brave Face. Five songs. Put it there. Put and, it and there. Put it there. And six songs. Yeah. Six songs right. from Flowers in the Dirt represented on, on this live album, which of an album he was pushing. So six songs from a great album, six great songs. Beatle classics, yeah. long, long and Winding Road, again, Birthday, Um can't buy me love. I mean, songs that we take for granted now, where this was the first time they were new. Eleanor Rigby, right. back in the USSR, had not been Fool played. On the Hill. Had yeah. not been, yeah, had not been played uh, at all. Um, you know, so it's it's you know, and okay, and then you, you've got your covers and sound check songs jumped in here too which is whatever but um, which i'm not the biggest fan of i mean this could have easily just been a double 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 record and i would have been fine with that i mean i'm not the biggest fan of yeah they're recorded great they sound good you know cracking up i think uh, you know you know it kicks um but i just want the 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 show you know i don't i didn't need those sound check songs mixed right. in inner 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 city madness and all that right stuff. yeah 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 oh i do now, I this do like is one Go ahead. No, I was just I do I like the I do like the fake the fake out with Hey Jude with the if I weren't upon the stage I like that that's that is right. cool. I mean to give it its own track yeah. though. Right. I mean, listen, the, the band was, was sounded great. Um, you know, I love Robbie did some fantastic guitar playing uh, on this tour. I would love to, you know, be able to talk to Chris Whitten, you know, about this tour, uh, yeah. you know, if he would ever, you know, 
because we've been in touch with him a couple times. And I mean, I would love for him to come on and, and talk about this tour um, on, just Chris. to set some, the record straight on, on, on a few things. But um, but it, it sounds great, Paul's, I think, uh, in, in fine there vocal is. form. Come on, you Chris. Know, there he is. Come on in, come on up, man. We'd love to but, talk to you. But one thing with the what you so if you want the uh, all my trials live, you have to get the highlights though. And I believe only the the UK the UK the UK you, highlights highlight you US get, highlights. You're not going to get it. Right, right, right. Uh, you know, um, Ebony and Ivory uh, sounds good. Um, you know, that's not bad. What's some of the highlights for you on there? Oh, uh, the flowers material, hands down. Yeah. Figure of eight, as you pointed out. This one, um, uh, Fool on the Hill, because he has that little break, you know, yeah. he, well, the, the Martin Luther King. But I do like how when he goes into Fool on the Hill, he talks about how it's it's for John, you know, George Ringo and John, without yes. whom would yep. not it be? Yep. You know, I like, I like, I like that little touch right there. Um, I like the arrangement of things we said today that opens up this too. Another highlight, that, yeah, for me, yep. re real bit. So it's not, it's not as, it's not as fast as the Beatles version. It's a little more slowed down, a little bluesier version, and then a really killer outro by Robbie McIntosh, slide right, right into the strings of Eleanor Rigby, which I know we're we're we're, we're sick of now, but in 1990, mm. 89, 90, you're like, oh my right. god, I'm hearing, I'm hearing Eleanor Rigby. exactly. Exactly. So now the, I, I will the say new factor. Go ahead. Right. I, I will say one of the, the low lows for me is listen, this was a big, big deal for of a tour, right? Bring the brass section back with you. You could have afforded it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, fine. Yeah. Wix does a great job, right? But still, I mean, it just would have sounded so much better if it was an actual brass uh up up on stage with them. You know, but though he was so he was so, in, and you know how he is. This is how he is. He loves the whole band thing. He loves the yeah. just the band thing. And th this was the first time he put a touring band together since since Wings. So, right. I guess you know, and Wings only had horns in seventy, you know, five, six, and then and then seventy nine. Seventy nine, you know, right? At seventy nine again, you know, to do it again in eighty nine, ninety wouldn't have been. You know, he could have been. And Wix does a great job as he always has, and he's been the guy that has been you know, carrying the banner for him since 1989 mm -hmm. as basically his musical director is what Wix is. He, he knows yeah, the parts. Right, exactly. He, he knows all the parts. He knows how they're, pro you know, it, it, Wix is the guy right. that makes it all happen. So um, yeah, would have real life horns would have been nice. Sure. Now you're going to say what's missing in this. You know, you're missing some big, big bonafide wings hits. There's no, listen to what the man said. There's no right. say, say, say there's no, you know, but, you're getting the Beatles songs back for the first time, really. You know, you're hearing songs fifteen background. of them. Fifteen of them. This, this is really when you see the when you, the tides are turning a little bit here, where you know we're getting more Beatles songs than we're than we're getting you know solo Wings uh, stuff. Yeah, and I must say the artwork too is a little different. One of the things I love about it, the CD, is the is that you get two books in the CD. Mm -hmm that really have some great photographs and they give you the tour. They tell you actually where each right. song comes from when it was recorded. So yes, if you're going right. through the, if you're going through the book, like the long and winding road was recorded in Rio on April 19th. Mm -hmm. So that kind of attention to detail. And uh, I believe you get that with the, uh, the next couple of live albums, you get it with Paul's live. They tell you where it comes from. In other words, right. you're not getting, you're not getting a live album. That's from one show. You're getting the Correct. best of the best, you know, to, right. you know, and I remember reading the liner notes here. He talks about how, um, you know, he says basically, you know, basically if, if I played it better, you know, if I played, let it be better in one night, I could fly, you know, one line in from another and, and mix it in. So yeah, there was a lot of that done with this, but um, it still represents the show. Right. You know, now, I'm curious about this and what you think about this. Cause you know, the world tour pack, right. Yeah, um, set that was released wouldn't yeah. have made more sense if if it had the tripping the live fantastic in there rather than the flowers and the dirt album in there. You know what I mean? Right, right. But what what that probably was released before the tour, right? I you know I, no, I I don't know. I got to find out when the that it was originally released, but whether it was eighty nine ninety. So to your point though, if you're calling it the world tour pack, throw this correct. In. Right. Yeah, yeah. Throw this in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I, I mean, it sounds, if I'm being if I'm being honest, it's got a little of that 80s kind of production uh, yeah. on it a little bit, you know, which of the time. But still, uh, other than Wings Over America, you know, this is the live album I go back to the most right. because the banter is on here. The banter is on here between the songs. You know, like before, I mean, got to get to Into My Life. You know, mm. you know, this is the, you know, this is, you know, well, we're going to play a song that Robbie wrote this morning while he was, you know, things like that. Right. And I will, and I will say that this sounds more live, the mix on this, it sounds more live than Wings Over America does. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. It does. Cause Maybe I think because you, I don't know if they put as much uh, post work on this one as, as, as they did with Wings Over America, you know, adding the ex, you, know, add, you know, overdubbing backing vocals, you know, and stuff like that. So um, again, this would be, you know, a great conversation for, for one of the band members, uh, you know, from then. You also, you hear more of the crowd in this too. You hear the, you hear when, when, when Paul goes into Hey Jude, you hear the playlist go right. crazy. Crazy, you know, right. You, you, the crowd noise isn't as isn't as uh, prevalent <clears throat> on Wings Over America. It's, right. it's, mixed, it's mixed down a little bit more, you know? Right. Okay, cool. But yeah, uh, so great. this, again, this, it's it's still a good, it's still a good uh, compilation. I mean, you know, I love this one again. I mean, I re was revisiting this one yesterday and today for the first time in a long time. Yeah, uh, and it was just really good listening to it again. I was yeah. kind of really surprised <laughs> how yeah, much, and, uh, you know, I enjoyed it. And I know you grabbed it not too long ago. I luckily found it years ago on eBay for about 40 bucks, a, a sealed Tripping the Live Fantastic um, vinyl, which I, I showed yeah. on Things We Bought Today, which I have not opened. It's right. still sealed. Um, right. You got it. Did you get it at the Fest? No, that was the All the Best uh, UK. No, so I got I, that for you. But did but Yeah, that you, you picked, found for me, yeah. Right, but you picked up a Tripping, though, at some point along the way, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, I did. Well, it was an eBay purchase. Yeah. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if you got that with me somewhere or something. No, no. Oh, no. Um, well, no. That was the All the Best CD, too. It's funny because I found the UK All the Best CD at the record place you took me, and then you found the UK <laughs> LP version of it for me at the fest. So at the, it was, so yeah. you know. You got yeah. them both. You got, yeah. You yes. got them both on two, on, on two separate trips. Yes. Yeah. So that was great. Trips. That was great. Yeah. So, yeah. Moving on a couple years later, a live album that yes. uh, maybe could have been a lot better. Let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Here we go. We're talking about Paul is live um, again. Uh, a November release in November of 93. 93 this time or four. 93, 93 or four. November of 93 because the tour was 93. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So uh, November 93. Um, and uh, again, only charting at 78 here in the U.S. Um, the, the the cover is kind of unique in a way. It, it goes over some of the Paul is dead, uh, yep. you know, rumors or you know, and stuff like that. Which uh, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of, you know. But anyways, but I like uh, what 51 is on the the license plate yes. on, the, on the Beetle. You know, yes. um, the the sheepdog is Arrow, uh, which is a uh, one of uh, Martha's offsprings, um, you know, so, uh, you know, okay. He's leading with the right foot where last time I think it was the left or, or is he leading? No, I'm sorry. He's leading with the left. Whereas on leading the Abbey road, he leads with the right. Yeah. 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 So, so, um, but you know, this was, this was the tour that I, I first saw Paul with. So it was very exciting. Pontiac Silverdome in, in 93, I think it was June 4th. Um, if I remember correctly, because I looked it up just to make sure that he did play some of the songs that I remember him playing and figuring and asking myself, well, why the hell didn't he put these three particular songs on this album? You know, which, which uh, one? well, OK, well, another day um, yeah. he did. OK, off the ground um, what that he did. And then every night. So he, played uh, he, those did, at your, he did at your show. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, for me, Off the Ground is one of the best tracks on the on Off the Ground. Uh, you know, every, every night and another day are, are, are classics, uh, you yeah. know, that hadn't seen uh, a, a Paul that wasn't on. I mean, even though he did it in 79, um, you know, he did it here, but, it, you know, it should have gone on the album. Didn't yeah. get it right. Didn't, didn't get a release. Didn't get and, a release. Uh, yeah, that's a, so you saw that. You saw every night and another day in 93, and they did not make it to the live album. You know, but then we're getting Correct. we're getting we're getting sound check songs instead of that. That's yeah. And, that's, and see, 
Go that's ahead. a kick in the ass. That's a kick in the ass. To, right. You're getting you're getting hotel and Benidorm, but you're not getting every right. night, which he played. Come on, man. Right. Yeah. Now, having uh, said that, you know, there's there are some nice moments on this live album. There are, but it's yeah. I don't revi- I don't revisit it a whole lot. No, but the other thing I don't understand either is that this one and on Tripping Life Fantastic, he closes it with sound check songs. Yes. You know, which I just found I just found very weird. Right, right. You know? Like and not which which is something he hasn't done since, obviously. Yeah. I mean, you listen, know? I love Don't Let the Sun Catch You Crying, but did did, did it have to end Tripping the Life Fantastic, you know what I mean? Right. You got to end that with Golden Slumbers, man. Right. Right. Yeah, no, the I end, love, it, well, yeah, Golden Slumber's camera that went at the end. Yeah, go ahead. Right, but I know I love the little disclaimer here, the warning about the ho- about mm. the uh, the soundtrack that said the soundcheck songs, tracks twenty two and twenty four, were improvised at soundcheck and therefore may not be suitable for people of a critical disposition. <laughs> there you go. He's so, telling all the critics to piss off. You know, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but there, there are some nice moments on this live album. Uh, the week, yes. you know, we can we can work it out. You you got for the yeah. first time Penny Lane, Paul doing Penny Lane, mm-hmm. which Penny Lane yes. and Magical Mystery Tour. Those are songs that again doing Beatles songs for the first time. Going back to the Flower stuff, hadn't heard any of those songs before in a live. You know, live, all my loving. You know, Michelle here, there, and everywhere. You know, first time for that. But there's there's the old stalwart that's in there again. Let me roll it. There it is. Right. <laughs> there it is. However, I I don't think they did the uh, the Jimi Hendrix jam after after no. the the actual song on this one. You know that's that didn't not... happen until after the two thousands. That's that's in the last ten years. That whole Jimi Hendrix right. thing, at least. Well, maybe maybe longer. Um, right. But a um, lot of off the ground. Lady Madonna, Paperback Writer. That was the first time we heard that. Um, right. I tell you what, though, in terms of the sound check songs, I do like the one that closes it. I like a fine day as a jam. It's a it's 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 a, it's, it's a nice out of all those little sound checky type songs. That's actually right. a pretty that's a, that's actually a really good one. A fine day. Mm. It, it's a it's got a nice yeah. little jam. It's got a nice little jam in it. It does. Yeah, you know, I I've always thought that he he was great vocally on this tour, or at least the show that I saw. I was very happy with. But uh, but again, I don't think we like. You know Robbie's bit. You know it, it's glad that I mean I'm sure you know it's it's good that it's there. You throw your you know your band members a bone uh, like that, but uh, but you know off the ground was, was heavy on this one as well, right? You got uh, looking for changes, peace in the neighborhood. You got hope of deliverance. You got biker like biker, an icon. Like an icon. Uh, come, uh, come on, on pe- people. Come on, people. You know, so you know yeah, so it was re- represented uh, represented very well. Almost, uh, in this almost, tour as well. yeah, and almost. off the ground and off the ground as well. And off, uh, at, yeah. So he threw five or six songs from the new album in there. Um, right. Yeah. You know, again, more sentimental, you know, again, I was a young teenager when this came out. So the, the, the sentimental factor is like, I remember playing in the hell out of it in the nineties because it was new mm-hmm. and it was right. the CD era. And it was like, Oh, Paul, I like it was what you played is what you did. But um Mm-hmm. You know, in the in the in the preceding decades, I don't go back to it as much. But um, I tell you what, scoring an original UK vinyl of Paula's Live was another one of my great vinyl finds. That yes, that that, that that was now that was that now I, it got redone right when the didn't it get redone in seven or eighteen, Tom? Yeah, yeah, I've got the I've got the reissue. Yes, the color or the black? Yes, the color, the color. Right, yeah. So, so that, that that was redone again as two LP. But if you can find an original Paul is live on vinyl, that's a, that's like hen's teeth to try to find those. So, yes, yes. Um, um, you know, Blair Cunningham, he is here to re- re- yep. replace Chris Whitten. And um, but yeah, highlights for me. I mean, I you know, drive my car is kicking. All my loving. You, you know, you mentioned we can work it out. Uh, paperback writer uh rocks on this one, and and, and Penny Lane too. Um, which I think he did. Didn't he do that on tripping? Um, maybe, maybe not, but, what? uh, Penny Lane, no, uh, Penny Lane, no, first time. Right. so first Penny time. Lane was, was first time on this tour, which, you know, when I, when, you know, when that started, I just, you know, I was <laughs> just like right. putty, man. It was just, I was just like a puddle of water on the, on the ground. You know, it was just so magical that night, you know, again, like you said, I mean, a lot of these songs he's doing live for the first time, you know, these Beatles, these Beatles tracks. 
Yeah. So, I remember watching, and I'm sure some of our viewers out there remember this too. As a kid, the Fox Network did a live uh, simulcast of the show in Charlotte. Do you remember this? You remember seeing this no. on television, Tom? The no, Charlotte, I didn't see it on television, but I remember the commercials for it. The Charlotte show, and you've got a couple of you've got a couple of uh, tracks from Charlotte on this uh, yeah. live album. Paperback writer, yeah. good rocking tonight. Paperback writer, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. And then those other ones. But I remember watching that and seeing the commercials for it and watching a Paul McCartney concert like live on television, you know, on Channel 5 in the New York area here. Yeah. yeah. For Fox, that was a, that was incredible to watch a live, you know, again, pre everything. Paul McCartney's going to be live. Like, remember, you get the TV guide, circle it, put the VHS in, tape it, record it. Now, tape it. <laughs> the live concert was great. Here's what was horrible. The concert film, Paul is Live in the New World, that is unwatchable. Unwatchable. Right. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's uh, what? It's just edits. You know, you're always constantly cutting into the crowd, right? Back and, and black, forth. Black and white color, black and white color. That doesn't bother me, me as much as the constant edits into the, into the crowd. You know, I want to see the show. I don't want to see the, you know, the 45 year old there with his 10 year old son crying. You know, I don't need that in my life. (laughs) (laughs) Something he got better Um, with. He got better with as years went on, like with good evening, New York city, which we'll get to. Right. There's not, there's not as much audience shots in that. It's just the show for the most part, if I recall. But yeah, uh, yeah, that, that, that was that, that was Paul's loan. That was his last contribution of live albums for at least another decade until uh, he picked up. Well, I should say there was 12, 12 Beatles songs on this Paul is live. Um, Just so we're keeping tabs. Yeah. 12 on this one. So 15 for tripping 12 for Paul is live now. Right. Okay. Between the end of this period, we'll just sum it up quick. Paul is live. Okay. The Beatles anthology, flaming pie and Linda passing away. That's a lot of, that's a lot of stuff. To go through man you know the anthology mm-hmm. linda passing away you know so between the years of 94 and 2001 you know it, and of course and ultimately george passing away at the end of november of 2001 true yes so that's, yes. A, that's a very very um you know very kind of up and down period for paul the, the the excitement of the anthology getting together with the beatles again recording freeze a bird real love the documentary all that putting all that out, Linda passing away and then sitting on it for a while and then deciding, okay, I'm going to go out and tour again. And he decides to go out and tour again and he goes out and tours again and he does that then. So Mm. he does that then and he, you know, decides to tour and go. So I have to cut that out. I just got a visitor. (laughs) Yeah, that's all right. Hmm. He does that then. Um, Pick it back up here. Hold on. In 2002, he decides to tour again, and he goes out with Back in the World and Back in the U.S. Here's yes. Back in the World. So, yeah, Back and, uh, in the U.S. Back in the U.S., so, which is one I just uh, – Back in the World was one of the last CDs I, I've, I still needed uh, in my collection, so I, I just purchased it last night. So hopefully I'll have it you know, in less than two weeks. So yeah. um, looking um, forward to that. Because there are yeah. a few changes. There are. Few there's three. There. There's three yeah. changes on, on between world and the U.S. Now looking back on it, this well, was the first kind time. of four, four in a way, four, four. Yeah. What do you got? Well, What's we'll get to first? that in a second. We'll get to that in a second. But anyways, oh, uh, yeah. again, yeah, again, it's released in November uh, this time in 2002, a two disc. This one charted at number eight here in the U.S. So this one did this one did pretty well as well. Um, now another the controversy again surrounding this. He goes back. Uh, after you know going McCartney Lennon on Wings Over America, then going back to Lennon McCartney, here he's back to McCartney Lennon. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> you know, he goes back uh, which, again. which is interesting. Yeah, Back in the World gets released in in March of two thousand three. Right. Okay. Yeah. A little, now the little difference later. is now with the world. The world has you never give me your money, Calico Skies, Michelle, and let them in. And, and she's leaving home. And she's leaving home, absolutely. And um, so, yeah, I, I'm really, uh, you know, because when you get when I got Driving Rain, 
Um, I could tell that his vocals were kind of just slightly, maybe starting to deteriorate a little bit. Um, his vocals weren't, to me, on the album as strong as past albums. I don't know how you felt about, uh, you know, what, what your thoughts on that, because, you know, Flaming Pie, I thought his vocals were terrific. Yes. Yeah, they were starting to get a little bit thin, just a little bit thin mm-hmm. a little, with Driving Rain. But I guess, you know, the Back in the World U.S. tour was special for me. That was the first time I saw Paul. I had never seen okay. him. This was my right. first time seeing Paul McCartney live in the flesh. So although it's, it's faded in terms of live shows, I've seen him a dozen times since. It's the first time I saw him. So in New York, in Madison Square Garden. So it's going to always hold a special spot for me because that's the first time I saw him. Um, you know, to see him come out and do Hello, Goodbye. And I remember like the Cirque du Soleil show of dancers and clowns for like a half hour in this buildup. It took forever and ever and ever. Now I look at the set list now and I'm like, ah, it's okay. But at the time I was totally wow. At the time, good set list. At the time, at the time, a really good set list, you know, you know, you're getting hello, goodbye, getting better. Um, Mother uh, nature's son, mother nature's son, every night, blackbird, uh, vanilla sky, uh, here today, now here and, today, and, and, here today right. for the first time, right? For the first and, time, and you know, and you always want to judge a, a, a live performance by how well he does. Maybe I'm amazed, and this one he actually does really well. Yeah, you know, yes, I was I was happy with his performance. So maybe I'm amazed on this one. This, uh, yeah. you know, Sea Moon, Sea Moon is back. Uh, you know, which uh, you know, I I, I love. Uh, more and more these days. Um, yesterday, he's still doing then. And uh, yeah, I mean, Vanilla Sky, you mentioned too. I mean, this is the only time you're going to get a Vanilla Sky live performance. Yep. Vanilla Sky um, and Freedom? No. Uh, yeah, Freedom. yeah, Freedom's on here as well. Now, now it does not now vanilla sky in the carry that weight doesn't work as well as you never give me your money into carry your weight, which right. um, which is one of the difference from back back in the world to back, back in the US. With, with back in the world, right? right. Um, now yeah. I I prefer the back in the world album just because of those because of those few changes it works. You know, right. to get to to get Paul doing she's leaving home, that's pretty right. special. You know, that's yes. You know, yes. she's leaving home. Yes. And the dif- yeah, and the differences on that one. Um, yeah, a little. I actually bought this on one of my trips to England because I, I I just bought it in the store. The sticker's still on it. I think it was, I forget, it was $13.99. So in pounds. Okay. So it wasn't $13.99 though. It was probably closer to $25 bucks then. Um, right. But yeah, to get to get she's leaving home on disc back then was like holy crap. Again, 20 years, 20 years later, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but it was. Right. Right. And then now he's doing something for the first time for tribute to George. However, this isn't the big production. This is just ukulele. Yeah. Um, and, and a little bass drum as well. Right. Which he wisely scrapped and went into the full version like they started right. doing with the concert for George version. But right. also the first time you're getting here today, which is not, yes. you know, you're getting here today for the first time, which 20 years later is like, uh, but it was pretty cool and special. To hear that, right? Because he time. did that. He did that uh, a day in the life into um, give peace a chance, right? I think that was on uh, tripping the life, fantastic. Yeah. If I believe. Yeah. Well, all in all, this I th- this is a pretty good live CD. I I you know very glad I went back and discovered rediscovered this one, and I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna put this on my car again and listen to it some more this week. I really enjoyed uh, this one. Um, 21 Beatles songs on this one, so they're starting to creep up a little <laughs> bit more, right? This is when now oh, the shows are yeah. pretty much, you know, three quarters Beatles songs. It seems like, you know, pretty much, pretty much, mostly Beatle yeah. heavy, but still tight. If I had to characterize the performances yeah. on this album, is that they're very tight. They're tight mm. performances. The band is tight. Well, the band is great. Yeah, right. This is the first. This is the first tour yeah. with his band that he still is yep. going with. Twenty years later. Yeah. Yeah, and that's amazing that's- right there. That that is amazing right there that he's been able to have this band, uh, touring band, longer than any incarnation of Wings, <laughs> you know, or or even the Beatles. Wings, uh, Wings, and the Beatles yeah. combined. Yeah, exactly. There you yeah. go. There you go. Wings All right, and- moving so, on. Last one. Last. Yeah, and and this is uh, one you actually got to go to. 
You got to, to see one. this show. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Mm. I was there. Um, good evening, New York City. Uh, the opening of City Field. I, he, Paul did three shows there. I was at two of them. Um, oh, really? Two. Okay. I, I, was at, I was at two of the three, which was, and again, looking back on it, um, still very Beatle heavy. Exciting, though. Um, so good set list here, too. Good set list, changing it up a little bit. Hot on the heels of electric electric arguments. arguments. Yep. Right. Hot on the heels of that. Yep. So, and and memory almost full, which was only two years old at this point. You know. True. You know, here, the, the, the law. Here's the lost live album, the Chaos Tour. We didn't get a live right. album, the Chaos Tour. That's the lost live album. But right. I I, I digress. But um, you know, you're getting sing the changes now. Only Mama knows. Highway. So you're getting and dance tonight. So you know you're getting and then you're getting for the first time ever, Mrs. Vanderbilt. Mrs. Vanderbilt. You know we'll talk about that in a second. But again, released in November. So this was released in November of uh, 2009. Uh, two disc. This charted at 16. Uh, came with a DVD. So yours, yes. does yours have the DVD in there? Certainly does. Okay. Um, Certainly does. Now. The version of Helter Skelter on this uh, won a Grammy for Best uh, Solo Rock Vocal Performance. Um, so not bad. Um, you know, this was actually, you know, again, um, you know, 2009, right? You know, you're worried about his vocals at this point, uh, right? But this was actually a pretty good vocal, vocally uh, show, right? I mean, now, what, what were your thoughts when you were seeing when you were at this show? I, I thought it was infinitely better than 2002 and 2005. I, I thought I don't think his vocals dipped in 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 any of those years uh, in terms of live performance. I thought it was still as good as it was than I had seen him in tw in, in 2002. Here in 2009, mm -hmm. I thought the, vocally he still was punching it, and he could still do "Baby I'm Amazed" and stuff like that. Oh, it's not on. It's not on here. Um, you know, "Flaming Pie," obviously. Um, I thought vocally he was fine. The band was great uh, each time I saw him. Uh, here today, again in, in New York, always a special thing to hear that uh, as well. And and Calico Skies in a new kind of arrangement that's a little right. bit different. It wasn't as it wasn't really the big falsetto um, that he actually does on on you know on Flaming Pie, but not bad. No, more of an upbeat song, a little more up tempo. Right. You know, uh, has you know, you got uh, Abe on the snare drum there that comes out and right. does his drumming on it as well. Um, uh, this is you get the a day in the life give give peace a chance. Uh, he's still working in the the Sergeant Pepper's reprise. The end. Golden Slumbers mm -hmm. has not worked its way back into his set yet. It, it's been gone. He has not worked that back into the set since since Tripping the Life Fantastic. So. You know, I was when I was going. I, I went three nights. I went to two nights here, and I'm like, "Oh, we am I going to get Golden Slumbers?" Finally, a couple of years later, he starts bringing Golden Slumbers back into the right. end of his set list. Right. So, mm. um, day tripper, a uh, lot of good memories of this of this concert. You know, live and let die outside in a baseball stadium with the fireworks. Always pretty special. You you were at SoFi, so you you know what that right. is. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I will say. Um, you know, we talk about highlights in here. I mean, the fact that he, you know, sing the changes in Highway from Electric Arguments. I mean, that right there for me is worth the price of, of the, worth the worth the price alone. Then you know you're getting, and then Mrs. Vanderbilt on top of that uh, for the first time. Only Mama knows, uh, oh, right? Yeah. A great, you flaming, know, great flaming, rocker. Flaming Pie from, from uh, Memory Almost Full. Uh, no, Only no Mama I'm knows. saying, I'm saying Flaming Pie oh. the song. Yeah, Flaming Pie, the song. Yeah, exactly. So um, the downside now is this too. If, if you know, it's it's just all Beatles except for uh, you know the Give Peace a Chance. You know, you, you know the Day in the Life, and then it goes into Give Peace a Chance. But but then this again, two. every this, this yeah, two this, is all this Beatles. Two, is all Beatles. This, two, this yeah. two is all Beatles. This two is all Beatles. Yes. But this one is a home run. This Agreed. 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 It, it really Again, is. would have been nice to have the uh, the actual horns, you know, the brass on there. But but again, you know, I thought he did a wonderful job on on my love. Uh, I was you know yeah. kind of surprised actually on how well he did that. 
Um, you know, so and I thought he was, he did sing the changes beautifully uh, on here. And and representing a period of work in Paul's career that didn't really get too many live so you didn't get too many you know he did sing the changes live on right. top of the uh you know the uh Ed, you know the Ed Sullivan theater you know uh, with, with with David Letterman you could see him doing sing mm-hmm. the changes not there um but to hear that in highway like to your point you know worth yeah. worth the price of admission and i to see those right. songs live was great sing the changes fantastic but yeah second mm-hmm. half is all beatles and uh at this point it's starting to go okay very beatle heavy i mean Let's see. Uh, one, well, twenty-one two, Beatles songs on here. Yeah, twenty-one, right? You counted up twenty-one. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, it, so, it is. It is. But it doesn't is... make it any less magical. I'm sure it didn't make that night any less magical. I'm sure that night, or, or all three nights, were were kick oh. ass. I mean, then he brings out Billy Joel for uh, what I saw her standing there, right? Yep. Yeah. Which I got to, you know, it was which I was there for the for the closing night for that. So. Yeah. Um, you know, the last proper live album from a tour. Now, what we got Amoeba, right. that's a one-off. Right, yes. live from a tour, from a proper tour. Right. This is 2009. Paul's done what? He did what? Uh, up and coming, out there. Out there. Uh, uh, you know, us was us. Uh, uh, no, that was, that was uh, 05. Yeah, um, that was 05, right. You know, but been, yeah, I, yeah, there's exactly. Been, there's been a there's, many. And there's been, yeah. Now, the question is, is, you know, should there be another one? I mean, should the, like, you know, Glastonbury, I mean, everybody was raving on, on how, how great he did for that. Now, the, uh, the UK fans out there, um, has anybody that's done Glastonbury, have they released their, their set from Glastonbury live on, on disc? I'm, I'm kind of curious if, if, that's, if, if anybody has released um, their live set. And, you know, does, do people do that? I'm, I'm really curious um, because I think that would have been a great way to close out his, his live career is by releasing that um, on disc. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Glastonbury is certainly a good way to go out. I mean, or having something that represents the last couple of tours, you know, and it may be a multi box, mm-hmm. you know, uh, or, right. or, right. or, or a, the, the much talked about career spanning, live box where we get you know the kitchen sink yeah from from yeah. from from the university tour of february of 72 all the yes. way to class all the way to glastonbury, glastonbury. And you just pick, right and you just pick and you do a multi-volume big big ass 10 cd live the best of everything <laughs> the best of everything it has there you go. It, has, it hasn't been done yet you know, mm. honorable honorable mention for live albums. I'll go with the live over Europe from the yes. Big Barn Box. That's a welcome addition. Big Barn as Box. Well. Yes. Yeah. No. Not- yeah, and that, and that is great too. You know, if you if you're able to get, you know, I'm sure there's people on on selling it on eBay, uh, just that or or whatever. I'm sure there's bootlegs of, of that out there as well. I definitely recommend uh, people checking out. Yeah. that CD because that was really that was really a good good job uh, and and thankfully Paul you know released that I think he it was wise to release that in the uh, in that big barn box so but uh, that's it that's the yeah. that's the live album live, al- live so. albums as a whole um, you know some are worth revisiting more than others there if you're if you were fortunate enough to be there it's a it's an audio keepsake of the night that you were there I mean I when I look at good when I look at this CD, I think about where I was sitting, where I was, mm. you know, that's the same thing what I do with, you know, any, so it's just, a, it's a, it's a memory is what you're buying. You know, you right. were there, you were there yes. for Paul's live. You saw him do off the ground. You saw him do all those things. So, yep. you know, the ones we weren't there for, we love, you know, obviously wings over America and tripping, I think are, are the crown jewels for me. Um, and though, again, tripping, tripping the live and wings over America, are out of the out of the five officially released live albums, those are the two I go back to the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely going to be revisiting back in the U.S. more, uh, and and you know definitely can't wait to get back in the world uh, in the mail. Like I said, hopefully within the next two weeks. So, mm-hmm. but uh, that's that's a wrap for this episode. Thank you, everybody. Again, please if if. Please help us out. Check us out on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you like discussions on McCartney, I mean, we do every aspect of McCartney's career. 
And, um, you know, I'm very happy to say we're going to have a couple authors coming up in December that I'm really, really excited uh, to have, the, you know, I don't, I don't want to jinx anything right now, but, uh, but listen, it's you know, be great. you know, you know who they yeah. are, you know, who they are, but, <laughs> but they're going to be here soon. Uh, and Andy, as of right now, you're going to go to the, uh, to the, uh, what the New York and the Grammy museum, right. To, uh, yep. for that, uh, um, for that book they're, launch they're, of the McCartney they're, they're, legacy. Yeah, book launch on December 14th uh, at the Grammy Museum in Newark with Adrian Sinclair and Alan Cozen for the McCartney legacy uh, when that book gets released. And I just can't wait to, you know, meet those guys in the flesh and just thank them for the years of work that they put into this uh, incredible book that will just light the, the, the academic and Beatles Paul McCartney world on fire. You know, I know there's a yes. lot of fans out there that like, you know, they like the music, but they don't really listen to books. You know, this book is going to have to be read. It's going to have to be on that Lewison level, and uh, yeah. I can't wait for I can't wait for it to come out. Yeah, you know, if you're any any type of beginner, casual, hardcore McCartney fan, that you are going to want to check this book out. And 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 please, you know, if we want them to continue uh, with these with this series, please help support it because buy it, buy it, whether it's whether the physical or Kindle, Kindle. Um, you know, we have, buy yeah, physical. We have to support. Buy physical. Yeah. Buy, buy physical. physical. Yes. You know, we can, we complain. We want physical media to, to continue and to grow, help support Alan and Adrian. Go and let's, it. you know, ho hopefully, I mean, I know they're signed for, for the first two books. Let's hope they continue. If, if these first two books are success, maybe that'll, that'll, um, you know, uh, you know, help them, you know, get a contract for the, uh, for the next two. Uh, you know, yeah. for for their publishers. So let let's let's help you know, them out. Okay. We know. So, well, well, yeah. Well, please support them. And while while there's yeah. been a lot of you know quietness from McCartney's camp, you know, with coming out, you know, but we got you got Revolver coming out, you know, in a couple of days. You know, the the, the vinyl and the CD set, and yeah. you've got the you've got the McCartney Legacy book coming out in December. So there is activity. Hey, look. You know. I am kind of, I'm kind of happy. We're, I mean, listen, the last, what, three, four years, we've been box set to death, right? Let's, 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 let's take the break. <laughs> let's take yes, the break. Yes, we have. Listen, we're, we're never satisfied. We always want the next thing, but, but let's, let's take the break for a little while. When those box sets come out, they'll come out. Okay. Just, you know, you don't need to speculate or anything like that. When no. they come out, they'll come out. And you know, That's just it. take the break right now. Just take and, the break. And, and, and um, keeping ask, asking questions about when's it going to come out is just pointless and stupid. They'll right. come out when it, it they'll is. come out. They'll come out when they're meant to come out. And you know, right. talking about it ad nauseum is just listen. If you love the album, talk about the album. But stop asking when is it going to come out. It's going to come out right. when it's supposed to come out. End of discussion. <laughs> Anyways, find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Two Legs Podcast. Again, the YouTube channel, Two Legs, a Paul McCartney podcast. Check us out. Uh, hit that subscribe button, the like, uh, the, the bell, all that good stuff. We, we love you. We appreciate you guys, as always, guys and gals. Uh, you know, we love your feedback, you know, whether it's good, bad, okay. Uh, keep it coming. And uh, we will talk to you soon. So, Andy. Uh, you just hit 100 subscribers on your other YouTube channel, right? I Talk did. about that real quick hit, before we I go. Hit, yeah, I hit. A, I think I'm up to 104, 105 on uh, right. my other channel, which is uh, Andy's Music Vault, the other leg, where I talk yep. about uh, everybody else but the Beatles and Paul McCartney. And uh, you know, I try to get one episode a month up there. And my last one on Genesis has done very well. It's got a couple of hundred views. It's a small channel. It's meant for kind of in-depth discussions and a, an overview uh, of a discography of another band and or artist of, that I like. And uh, not sure who I'm going to do yes next, but uh, maybe the who. I'm not sure. We'll see. But or maybe okay. I mean, maybe we'll, but we will we shall see. Okay, and my real quick, my other show, Talk More Talk. Yes. Uh, the next episode that you're going to see is going to feature author Chris Englehart, which he's got two really cool books, and he's got an updated version of these two books, and they're called Beatles Undercover. Okay, and what it is, is it's all the side projects, all the work they did for other artists, whether they produced it, wrote it, played on it, sung it, whatever. All these little gems, like, you know, My Soul or, or the Pussycats album or, or all the stuff George did for, for Ravi and, and, you know, and, you know Badfinger. Uh, you know, it's all in these books, all the drumming that Ringo did for, for the other acts. 
it's all in the uh, it's all in these these books. So please, uh, you know, check that out and and look up uh, Chris Engelhart's uh, latest version of the two volumes. Okay, so that's gonna be us. That can blah, 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 that's gonna be it for us <laughs> right now. So Andy, good to see you as always, my friend. I'm Tom Hunyadi. That's Andy Nichols. And as always, have a great day and a beautiful night, everyone. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Listening to Two Legs, a Paul McCartney podcast, hosted by Tom Hunyadi and Andy Nichols, with musical contributions by Dylan.